It's hard to imagine a time the world has needed a new Animal Crossing game more than right now. You can complain until the cows come home about Nintendo being too kid-friendly or lacking the violent edge of others, but honestly, right now, the chilled-out world of Animal Crossing New Horizons is all we need to drift away from the horrifying realities of day-to-day -day life we all face. In truth, it's not that New Horizons does an awful lot new, either. Yes, it's had a glorious lick of HD paint to bring our favourite characters, and Tom Nook, into the modern era, and yes, it runs beautifully and looks lovely. In fact, a new favourite thing of mine to do is to walk into someone's house and then back out, to see them greet me and then do a lovely, nice smiley wave as I leave their presence. Animal Crossing is all about you your time, your island life, your whims and needs. It doesn't want you to shoot anything other than a present from the sky with your trusty slingshot. It's just nice. This is a game where you can do everything and nothing based on how you're feeling that particular day. You feel like mooching around and chatting to your friends on the island? That's fine. Fancy clearing your newfound home out and rinsing it of fruit, ore, fish, bugs and trees to make money to pay off your loan and build an extension? That's fine. Want to invite your real-world friends over to trade fruit? All good, yep. It's the ultimate game for those who like to potter, or those addicted to the grind, and the grind is very real. New to Animal Crossing on Nintendo Switch is a system called Nook Miles. While you'd normally sell everything that isn't nailed down for the bells, and that's still a thing you do here, you are rewarded for simply playing the game in a new manner. Veterans will rack up Nook Miles instantly just because they know the systems and what you do each day you log into New Horizons. Nook Miles fills at once a system to aid newcomers, funneling them into the ideals that make the systems work, but also a way to make you think about what you do and when. On top of that, a new DIY system adds some Minecraft-like ideas into the mix. Whereas in the past you'd start the game slowly, shaking trees for fruit in order to sell to buy tools, here you need to get materials to craft. For example, an axe. Once you've got the axe, you can chop wood from trees, and then you can use the wood to build a spade. This allows you to plant trees, mine ore from rocks, which in turn enables further crafting possibilities. None of this is new per se, it's just a new way of doing old things, and it's just just different enough to make the early days with New Horizons feel like it's not just the same thing again. DIY recipes are learned in all manner of ways. Some are just bought from the shops, others are given by island friends, some cost Nook Miles, but there's always something to build towards. The Nook Miles system gives the game more direction in the early stages, with Tom Nook easing anyone new to the series down a path that is fun, but crucially, teaching the basics. Eventually Nook Miles Plus are introduced, offering literal mini-events you can aim for, like chop five wood or catch a dab, that gives you a smaller but no less important Nook Miles reward. Long-term fans will want answers to a few questions, but I won't be spoiling those things here. It is worth pointing out though that the first week of the game will be slow, especially if you don't have friends to play with. But the co-op may well be the star of the show here, actually. Although you can't visit other islands with local friends, the manner in which you play together is simple yet highly effective. Anyone who isn't the main player or the leader only has minimum control over their character. You can't bring up your inventory, nor use the tool wheel, which you don't start with, by the way. Instead, you're a helper, and whenever you drift too far, you're warped back to the main player. So how's that the star, you're wondering? Well, due to the nature of the Switch's profile switching, you can literally just shake the controller to offer leader status to your co-op buddies. Since the non-leader can't pick things up, this means trading is a cinch. It means parents and families can play together in a beautifully elegant way, and that there's rarely any awkward switching between players. It just works so well. As a long-term fan of the series, it's difficult to find fault in New Horizons. Everything you'd want to be here seems to be. I refuse to time skip for the review because that's not how I play. And that's the thing, isn't it? Many games will ask of you things you maybe don't want to do, but Animal Crossing allows you to play at your pace. Again, it's here for you. It's nice to you. It demands nothing that you don't want to be offered. There will be complaints that it's still too slow. There will probably be some that wish Nintendo would alter the game and stop it being a daily game that has sort of upper limits as to what can be achieved in a single day. But to do so would be to ruin what makes it so special. Indeed, I found myself less focused on getting the biggest house and paying my loans in New Horizons, instead preferring to make the island a better place for all of us, creating bridges to cross rivers or making steps to higher ground. 
I alluded to it already, but Animal Crossing New Horizons is, is exactly what the doctor ordered. I had fears going in. I worried that my wife, someone who doesn't play a lot, wouldn't like it because it required a controller and she played her hundreds of hours on the 3DS last time with touch controls. Those of us who love this medium perhaps take for granted that handing someone a controller is like asking them to suddenly be able to speak a foreign language, but she didn't. She loves New Horizons too. I even cheekily caught myself wondering if this could be a gateway into different worlds for her. I worried too my children, both of whom were youngsters when New Leaf came out eight years ago, both of whom who are teenagers now would have no interest. Yet it was my son who spent three hours getting the things we needed to complete a project while I was out. It was my eldest who, upon seeing us all playing together, cooperatively chopping trees and catching fish, decided he too wanted to rejoin the world of Animal Crossing. It's hard not to share these personal stories with you because that's what Animal Crossing is to me. It's sharing spreadsheets about turnip prices and what fruit you can share with your pals to make their island a better place. It's a pure, undiluted, saccharine sweet taste of friendship that brings us all together and allows us a place to escape where an anthropomorphic pig calls me lamb chop every time I speak to her and a duck called Scoot constantly wants me to go for runs with him and work out. I won't apologise for sentimentality in a world that is ever increasingly moving towards anonymity and the cold shoulder. If you're looking forward to Animal Crossing New Horizons as a long-term fan, know that this is everything you could have hoped for, which is to say it's more Animal Crossing with quality of life improvements on what might be the best console Nintendo's ever put out. It will sell millions, it'll earn new fans, and it will top play counts for years to come. But knowing my family will be playing this together for a long, long time makes me feel like everything else is going to be all right. And goodness me, what more could you ask for? Thanks so much for watching our Animal Crossing New Horizons video review. We hope you liked it. We hope you liked everything about it. And maybe if you've just found us randomly because you've typed it into the old Google, you'll stick around. So if you want to try us out, have a look around, subscribe, and maybe hit the bell button so you never miss another video. Follow us at God is a Geek on Twitter. And just thank you for your time, really. We'll see you in the next video, hopefully. Bye for now.